In this video, we are going to have a look at a obfuscated PowerShell script. So um, I'm going to deobfuscate the script and uh, then we're going to see what it does. First, um, let's go ahead and unzip this. Now we have this PowerShell script here, which we will just have a look at in BIM. So I'm going to edit this and as you can see, there is this huge string in here and uh, the PowerShell executable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part here, which I guess will be base64 encoded, and then I'm just going to decode this. For that, I will go ahead and close this up, and then I am just going to use cat to output the script here. Then we will copy this, and then I will put this into a new file. So I will call this b64.txt, and I'm just going to paste this base64 in. Next, we can go ahead and use the command cat on this b64.txt, and then we can pipe it to base64 and use the minus d flag to decode this. So if we run that, you can see we get something a lot more readable. And of course, this is heavily obfuscated, so we will have to do some more work so that we can actually read this. For that, let's uh, throw this into a new file, and I am going to call this stage1.txt and just throw this in here. Down here, you can see all of these replace commands. And that is why I am actually going to go ahead and run this in PowerShell so that most of the work is done for us and we don't have to manually fool around in here. And then we will see what we get from that. So first of all, I am going to delete this part up here. And notice that we now have the uh, parentheses here, which are correct. And then I'm going to close this up. Let's open up a uh, a new terminal here. So I just split these, and then we will run PowerShell. You can download PowerShell from Microsoft.com for Linux, and what you get then is a PowerShell on Linux. So you don't have to switch over to a um, to a Windows machine to do this. Of course, um, the uh, the extension has to be PS1. So I just moved the stage 1 TXT to stage 1.ps1. And now we can run this. And as you can see, we get an output. We can take this and again edit it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a stage 2.ps1 here. Paste that in. And again, you can see there is a lot of obfuscation going on here. Now the thing here is, that um, when you look at this closely, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, and highlight these. You can see that there is actually a lot of string obfuscation going on here with this plus. So this is something that we can actually quite easily remove. So for that, I am just going to replace this and I'm gonna replace it with nothing. And there you go. Already looks much better here. We can go ahead and clean this up some more, actually. Um, again, the parentheses here, oh, we just have to keep that in mind. And here I am just going to add some new lines. And this is going to make the whole thing more readable. Now, there again are some uh, replace commands in here. So um, if we go to these replace uh, in here, we can see there's a couple of string replacements happening. So first of all, this uh, 1QD is going to be replaced, the CFA is going to be replaced, and so on and so forth. We can actually replace these by hand, and then uh, we will hopefully get readable text. All right, so now we have everything replaced. Um, to make this more readable, I'm going to throw away this top part and this part because we don't need that anymore. 
and also um, we replaced everything so we can just throw those out too. This actually looks quite good at the moment. There is just one thing um, and that is as you can see here with this semicolon. So if we just um, mark this real quick we'd see there's a lot of URLs in here and uh, next we're going to just uh, add a new line when we encounter a semicolon so we can read this more easily. Okay, so let's clean this up some more. All right, so this is it. Uh, we have a list of URLs here. Um, there's one in here that just has HTTP. The others are all HTTPS. And then we have this line here which is going to do a web request to these URLs and try to download this software update exe. Now the if statement is going to check uh, the content length if this is not equal to minus one. So if we got something back, we are going to download this file. I guess it's going to be uh, saved as update exe on disk. And then we have this uh, start process, which is going to start up this uh, update exe. So this uh, PowerShell script is pretty much going to reach out to these URLs, try to get software update exe and run it on the target system or on the victim system. Then of course we have this HTTP close at the end. So I have uh, connected up to Tor and uh, yeah, let's try some of these out. So I'm gonna take this uh, the second one first. So let's throw that in here. And uh, okay, we have a security risk. That's nice. Uh, we're just gonna go advanced and accept the risk. Okay, well, let's forget about that one. I'm gonna copy this one, just go out to this website. Okay, we have a suspected phishing site ahead. And uh, just going to go in here. All right, it's forbidden. And then we have this uh, HTTP B29.bet. Let's go here and explore that. And we actually get something. Cool. Um, so let's see if we get the software update.exe. And if we can download that. Doesn't look like it. So file isn't found. All right, I'm not gonna try the other ones. Uh, instead, let's jump over to the Windows box and actually try to uh, try to see if, uh, if I was correct here. So for that, on this machine, I am gonna go ahead and do a sudo inetsim. Okay, so first we're gonna check if uh, if the, the inetsim uh, HTTP server and the download stuff is working correctly. For that, I'm just gonna go uh, and say, uh, let's go to www. Uh, it's gonna be test.com, and from there we're gonna download uh, example.exe, and you should see that we get this download here. And if we open it, it's just gonna say, okay, this is the default, uh, the inetsim default GUI binary. So this is running. This is working correctly. So. Let's run the script with PowerShell, and if everything works correctly, we should see the uh, GUI binary come up multiple times, because for each URL, we're gonna get a response. So we're gonna run that, and it just takes a second, and as you can see, we got this uh, default GUI binary three times. So now, uh, here we're gonna stop the capture, and then, we can go through these. There should be some HTTP traffic in here because there was one HTTP site. Uh, and then we can actually uh, read the, the traffic that's going back and forth. So as you can see, this is here. Um, it does a get for this uh, software update exe. So we were correct about that assumption. And if we look at the header here, it uh, actually reaches out to one of these URLs with uh, with the HTTP, so it's b29.bet, and it tries to download the software update exe, and then it's going to run it. So if um, 
if we now go ahead and look at the path here, uh, we can see that it downloads to C users, then my user, uh, app data local, temp, and update exe. So uh, the analysis was also correct on that. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this software update exe. I would have loved to see what uh, kind of malware the script actually downloads, but um, it's not online anymore, so uh, we can't do anything more there. But still, um, I showed you how to deobfuscate this uh, this PowerShell script. I'm by no means a PowerShell expert, but maybe you can get some ideas from this. And uh, I hope you learned something watching this video. So with that being said, uh, if you got this far, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you around. Goodbye.